Welcome to the Two Pages of Mystery podcast, now part of the Coil Entertainment Network. I'm your host, Rob Steele. If you're new to the show, I should tell you its purpose. It's hard to get published these days unless you've been published. So what we do here is we'll take your short story and publish it. First as an ebook on the website, then we turn it into an audiobook for the podcast, and when we've got enough stories to put together, we'll turn it into an actual book that you can buy at an actual store. How cool is that, right? Then you'll even have something to put on your literary resume. Now, if you'd like to submit a story, just email it to us at submit at twopagesofmystery.com. Now, there are some rules. The list of rules is available on the website, also called twopagesofmystery.com. It's number two, Pages of Mystery Uses Letters. Just works out that way. Now, we would like to thank iTunes, the Google Play Store, and the Happy Hour Network for passing the show along. And don't forget to follow all the Coil Entertainment Network shows on Pinterest or even the YouTube channel. Or you can also check them all out on the CoilEntertainmentNetwork.com website. In today's story, Lieutenant Cooper Wright has to solve the murder of someone who belongs to a class of society he doesn't particularly care for. A clown. But this case has a twist that no one saw coming, especially the victim. Today's story is called Bubbles. I hate clowns. It's not a personal thing. Technically, I've never actually met someone who claims they're a clown. Not a real clown, anyway. Sure, they were class clowns. Then there's Roger in the fraud department, but he's more of a class clown wannabe. I think it has something to do with the makeup and the shoes. I have a built-in distrust of people who wear disguises. I'm a cop. I'm supposed to. That and creepy plus over-the-top slapstick never made much sense to me as a combination. Like shrimp and chocolate sauce. Individually? Sure. Together? No thanks. So we get the call that there's been a homicide at the circus. Part of me is perversely hopeful that it's a clown. I suppose the good news is, I got my wish. The bad news is, I now have to investigate who killed Bozo. His name was Bubbles. Right, thanks Manny. What was his real name? He didn't have one. According to his driver's license, he's Bubbles. Mandy handed me the license. It was hard to read in the clown trailer. A single light bulb in a trailer that's supposed to house three clowns. That's a little sad. I look at the license and I guess this guy just took his work that seriously. No first name, no last name, just Bubbles. Which makes the license a bit fake since you can't legally do that. I look down at the body that's missing most of its head and try not to smirk. Somebody popped Bubbles. That's when I realize it's going to be one of those cases. It's not supposed to be funny when someone gets popped with a shotgun at close range. I figure that's what it has to be. Anything bigger would have left gaping holes in the wall. Do we have the name of the other clowns here? Or are they all pseudonyms? Manny checks his notepad and gives me the names Snappy and Waldo. Or Marcus Berman and Owen Reeves, depending on your perspective, I suppose. And they're both in the big top with the ringmaster, Darius Wolf, and several officers to make sure that none of them leave. As Manny and I take all leave so Dr. Young and the CSIs can process the body in the darkened trailer, Manny tells me that this circus is usually just a springtime activity for the locals. It's kind of a fantasy camp thing. People train and sign up to perform, but they don't have to travel. They can keep their jobs and not have to worry about whether or not it will work as a career. Every spring, they all camp here for about a week or so, And they put on three shows starting this coming weekend. Why haven't I heard about this? I mean, I've lived here for, what, all my life? You don't like circuses. What makes you say that? You don't like clowns, boss. Okay, fair enough. I try not to let my discomfort show. I don't know what it is about this case, but it gives me the creeps. It's not that it's already gotten dark. I've worked plenty of cases at night. I think it just might be the combination of clowns, nighttime and that we're not actually in town as much as we are on the outskirts. It's just a creepy feeling, like a horror movie. 
I try to shrug it off as it's time to talk to our suspects. The Big Top isn't as big as the circuses where I learned to dislike clowns when I was a kid, but considering it's more of a fantasy camp, it's not bad. There are still three rings, although two of them on either side are considerably smaller than the center one. And the center one is where I find seven uniformed officers on the outskirts of the ring, loosely surrounding our three main suspects, who are sitting on barrels. I stop short of the rings and turn to Manny. Something else just occurred to me. See if he can find out if PETA or any of those animal rights groups are having an issue with this circus. Okay, boss, but they don't have any animals here other than dogs. And they're the pets of the people who volunteer to perform. They just dress them up in costumes. I immediately picture someone's chihuahua dressed in an elephant costume and have to stifle a chuckle. That may be true, but when I think circus, I think animals. Because you don't like clowns. Shut up, Manny. And if I think there might be animals, they might think that too and want to retaliate against animal oppression or whatever they're calling it this week. Many nods and heads outside to get a cleaner cell signal. Probably going to call Tim back at HQ. He's good at this kind of thing. As I head back to the main ring, I realize I'm getting annoyed at Peter and their kind of group. They keep doing something that really annoys me. I mean, I might get behind some of these causes if they'd keep the name constant instead of changing it every few weeks. Animal oppression, animal rights, animal endangerment. It all means the same thing, so pick a name and leave it alone. I look at the three suspects in the ring and decide that splitting them up would probably be best. I point at one of the clowns, Owen Waldo Reeves, as it turns out, and motion for him to join me in one of the smaller rings. I figure I may as well get the clowns out of the way first. I'm not sure if it's the makeup and an act, but he holds Snappy's hand and looks forlornly at him as we step away from the group to talk. And you two make such a cute couple, I begin sarcastically as we enter the second ring. Oh, thank you! We've only been married for three weeks, but we've been together forever. I'm glad it shows. It took me a minute to process that. A gay clown couple. Sure, why not? Gay means happy, right? And who's supposed to be more happy than a clown? Makes sense. So, um, Owen, right? You're a part-time clown? I used to be. I just changed to full-time when we got married. Mark is still a CPA and can easily support both of us, so I decided to leave my life as a barista and become a clown full-time. I work parties and charities, and I help out at the children's hospital downtown. I love seeing the smile on the kids' faces when I show up, and laughter is the best medicine. Overly perkiness. That's one of the reasons I don't like clowns. Too damn sprightly. So you're married to Mark, but you also had to work with Bubbles. What can you tell me about him? Even a real name would help at this point. Owen scowled. At least I think he tried to. It's hard to tell with a perpetual smile painted on his face. David to Merrick. He gives all clowns a bad name. He's mean and cruel and doesn't like children. He's a horrible person. A look of realization came across his face that even I had to smile about. The combination of his expression and the makeup was priceless. Oh my god, I just made myself a suspect, didn't I? I chuckled and scratched absently at my forehead. Honestly, no more so than you already were, really. So, you two didn't get along? Did that include Mark? Oh honey, no one liked Bubbles. But Mark and I were the ones who found him and called it in. D does that count for anything? I mean, we're only still here because we were practicing a new routine in the big top. I thought Bubbles left hours ago. I thank Owen, tell him to wait with Mark in the ring, text Manny the name David to Merrick, and call Darius Wolf over. The ringmaster certainly looks the part. Black boots, white tights, flamboyant red jacket with big gold buttons. He even has the hat. And I thought he had the big handlebar mustache. But as he approaches, I see him remove it and put it in a jacket pocket. I thought I should be up front with you. And I'll be forthcoming about something else too. I'm your primary suspect. Although, I didn't do it. I knew it couldn't be that easy. Earlier today, and I haven't announced it yet, 
I fired Mr. Tumeric. There were just too many complaints about his conduct. And after his stunt last year, I was hoping he'd learned his lesson. Ten minutes into this season, and I could tell he hadn't. What did he do last year? Well, it was a circus staple, really. The bucket switch. It's a clown thing. Make it look like you have a bucket of water, but when you throw it on the crowd, it's full of confetti. Bubbles thought it would be fun to actually use water. He doused the first three rows. The circus deflected the lawsuits over the damaged cell phones to him, but I guess he didn't learn. I heard he paid everything off, though. Not sure where he got the money. As far as I know, he was a full-time clown, but I don't know anyone who actually hired him. If he had no, let's say, references, how did he get involved with this circus? I know it's a kind of volunteer outfit, but there has to be some credential checking, right? A, a background check of some kind? Oh, he passed the background check, but I can't see that any of his references had anything to do with being a clown. I think he found a way to bully his way in. I don't really know. I've only been in charge here for three years, this being the third. He was here long before I was. And I know it's not much of an alibi, but I was here with Owen and Mark going over their new act. We're each other's alibis, but we're also the three best suspects. I don't know about them, but I thought Bubbles left hours ago. That's two who thought Bubbles was gone. A quick interview with Mark made it three for three. Not that I had many questions for Snappy, but about what I would consider halfway through, I get a call from Dr. Young. Your case is about to take on a whole different look, Koopa. The man with the missing face is not Bubbles. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Manny found Mr. Tumeric has a record, and his fingerprints on file do not match the remainder of the corpse I have here. The fingerprints match a Herbert Zobel, a Polish immigrant who works for a sanitation company. Well, of course it does. And I roll my eyes appropriately. Not that Doc can see that over a phone call. I thank Doc for my time and turn my attention back to Snappy. Does the name Herbert Zobel mean anything to you? Snappy looks perplexed for a moment before having his realization. Oh, Herbie. Yeah, the janitor guy. He came in the tent a few times. He said he always liked clowns. Oh, and I made him up one time. He said he'd like to be a clown in the show, but that's when Bubbles came in and had a fit over it. Three clowns is enough, he said, and threw Herbie out of the trailer. Literally. It was not a good situation. We did catch Herbie in the trailer that one time trying on makeup. We didn't mind. After Bubbles, it was good to see someone who was actually enthusiastic about being a clown. Manny interrupts this time, surprisingly, by phone. He said that Tim had updated him on the situation, and a car registered to Tumeric was still here, so maybe Tumeric was too. I tell Snappy to wait with the others and join Manny outside the tent. If he's here, he's probably still got that shotgun he used on Zobel. You see anything moving around out here? Manny and I scan the area around the big top. We rule out the main tent as we've been in there and haven't seen anyone. There are seven other trailers, but they're dark. Manny says the clowns are the first to show up for this, and no one else is supposed to be here until later this week. There's the crime scene, which is taped off and guarded by another officer, and a supply tent. Otherwise, there was a large amount of nothing. Since Manny says he checked the other trailers when he got here, and they're all locked, we decide to check the supply tent. It's about half the size as the big top, but nowhere near as empty. It's also dark. Manny flipped the power switch so it's lit. Barely. The tent is full of spare bleachers, enormous spools of trapeze wires, animal cages, hoops, and a lot of other paraphernalia you'd expect to find at a circus. Although, rather than finding it in the show, it's all piled up in here. The poorly lit circus tent that may contain a deranged lunatic clown with a shotgun. Swell. Unlike a Scooby-Doo cartoon, which this almost feels like, we don't split up. Manny and I both have our weapons drawn and are using flashlights to illuminate the room. We start making our way around the right side of the tent when a series of noises, a large bang, a muttered curse, and a strange organ-like music begins on the left side of the tent. 
son of a We both change our directions and head toward the disturbance. What the hell is that? Manny tilts his head and replies, It sounds calliopean. What? You know, like a calliope. The big circus organ thing. I'm not sure that's a word, Manny. Hang on a minute. You're not using Tim's synonym app, are you? Before he can answer, we both hear the distinct sound of a shotgun being racked and we both dive for cover. I think my hiding behind a hot dog vendor cart might be a bit better than Manny's net of pre-filled balloons. The reaction is almost a reflex, though, and it's not his fault there was nothing there to hide behind. Not that it mattered. The shot that came took out the calliope. All of a sudden, it was quiet. I noticed my dive for cover has put me close to a clearing on the far side of the stack of equipment. So I slowly and quietly make my way for the opening. Staying close to the ground, I poke my head out and, down the aisle of circus apparatus, I see a pair of enormous red shoes and the lower half of really baggy blue pants with yellow polka dots. I can see why he didn't run for it. Lousy running shoes, and I think those pants might just be glow in the dark. I signal Manny to distract him while I move in from behind. David Tumeric, this is the police! My name is Bubbles. You cops should get it right. While I'm moving toward the suspect, I do glance back at Manny, who is trying really hard not to laugh. Okay, Bubbles, this is the police. We have the tent surrounded. Put down your weapon and come out with your hands above your head. I'm about three steps away from making my move when Bubbles announces, Okay, since you asked nicely. I can't believe it. That never works. There's always a standoff. I suppose it was reflexive of me to mutter, Really? Which was almost a mistake. Apparently, I startled Bubbles, who turned to see me with my gun pointed at him, which caused him to stumble and drop the shotgun, which goes off and starts the calliope playing again. <laughs> Albeit in a horrifically broken manner. Bubbles starts crying and saying he's sorry and rolls over on his stomach and puts his hands on his head. I just lost my temper. I didn't mean to shoot Herbie. I just caught him stealing my makeup. Pretty soon I was sure he'd steal my job too. Trump was right. Damn immigrants. Great. Not only is he a clown, but he's a stupid, bigoted clown. I keep my gun trained on him while Manny moves in and cuffs him. As I pick up the shotgun, I kick the calliope and, mercifully, it stops, well, I would say playing, but it really sounded more like a hungover moose. Hey, boss, how are we going to get him in the back of the car? I don't initially understand the question until I follow Manny's gaze and he's got a point, sort of. The shoes are removable, Manny. I'm pretty sure his feet aren't actually that big. We hope you enjoyed listening to the show. If you'd like to submit your story for the audiobook treatment and publishing on our website, don't forget to use the email address submit at twopagesofmystery.com. And of course, don't forget to pass the show around to your friends because who doesn't love a mystery? That and it's free. So until next time, keep writing and keep them guessing.